Uh, hi everyone and welcome to uh, today's Forex uh, session and uh, we are now ready to roll. The, the recording is going but before we start as usual may I please draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know trading can be a very risky business so please uh, you know, don't uh, use money that you cannot afford to lose. Fantastic. Right, let me just see if I can work this. Sometimes I'm not very good with my slides. Oh, here we are. There we are. That's me. That's David sitting. He's actually sitting opposite me at the moment. Uh, we will be running this in tandem. We'll be looking at the markets through the prism of volume price analysis, but also looking at the fundamental news, the uh, what's happening in related markets, how they interact with uh, what's happening on our uh, in the forex and also um more and more the politics and i won't bore you with all the politics you you're all very much aware of what's uh, going on especially here in the uk but uh, i've got a very interesting little link to uh, uh, to share with you later on uh, which um, which really did make me chuckle i did put it up on my facebook page for those of you who who follow that but uh, I'll, I'll i'll share that with you in a few minutes and basically what we do we'll be looking at the charts as i said from the perspective of volume price analysis but drawing in all these other elements that help to explain um, what is driving the uh, the price that you see on the charts and what VPA does for you it will it really anticipates what is likely to happen next and we will also be using it in conjunction with our quantum trading indicators this is the slide from the uh, education program I can see we've got some of our students here in the room today you'll know this is from the relational analysis module it really explains how all the markets all the four capital markets are in they're very intimately connected and once you understand the connections it's not so much to do with correlation it's really to do with how they they interact with one another and uh, you know when bonds are moving which are the currencies that is likely to, to be moving as I said it's not it's not strict correlation it's really the intimate uh, relationships that the four capital markets have with one another and how we can use that and leverage that to uh, help also help explain why uh, certain currencies may or may not be moving and as I said we'll be using the uh, the quantum uh, uh, indicators from the quantum tool set again I can see some of you some of our quantum users which is lovely to have you join us and I'm always uh, delighted David and I are always delighted to have you join us and I'm delighted to receive some of the uh, fantastic emails that we get from new users and um, you know the trading conditions are not easy at the moment and I think I had a, uh, a and um, and the, uh, the email, my, the latest email I had was one of our latest uh, users actually has the indicators for trading view and, uh, you know, is doing uh, extremely well in, in choppy markets. And if you can do well in choppy markets, you know, and make and take pips and very small losses, I can assure you these conditions aren't going to last forever. You will do uh, even better when the markets kind of settle down and have some firm direction in one way or another. This is just from the currency a dashboard. This is the subset of the indicators specifically for the Forex. Um, we've got the currency strength indicator, the matrix at rate and heat map. We always start with the currency strength indicator and particularly the way things are at the moment. This is the, uh, this is the, this is the indicator that if you don't have it, I, urge you strongly to consider, if not ours, then uh, an indicator that will uh, show what is happening on an individual currency, because at the moment, the way things are, it's the only way we can uh, we can really try and pick out where we can see some movement in, uh, you know, some movement where there is an opportunity for a trade. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pass over to David. He's, uh, I think he's recovered now from the stress of technology and uh, we'll get going. Thanks, darling. Very warm welcome and um, apologies for the uh, the slight delay. Um, I can tell you trading is a lot less stressful than dealing with technology sometimes. But there we go. Um, can I take the slides? Yeah, the slides can go. Sorry, darling. Yeah. Um, and um, back to the charts, which hopefully you can see on Anna's side. Anna's on MT5. Uh, I've got the Ninja Trader running on my side, Ninja Trader 8, and um, just uh, seeing what's going on. It's. Um, it's pretty flat at the moment. I've got uh, Anna's got pound yen, but I've got uh, cable up, and uh, there's been a bit of a rally on the pound. Um, but as always, 
that could well reverse as we get up to eight o'clock. So it's uh, certainly tentative in terms of a of a bullish um, reversal on the faster time frames. I'm talking about the five and the fifteen minute at the moment. Let me pass back to Anna, and we will get going. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, um, I really did have to. Sh I really do have to share with you this with you because it did, it made me chuckle so so much. Um, and then basically, the algos that are used that have been used up uh, to try and trade the um, uh, what is happening with Brexit is that they have they've basically well blown up really. That's the only way that you can uh, that I can describe. It. I'm going to put this link in the in the um, in the chat because it really is worth um, um, uh, reading and. Um, and also, it, it kind of, well, it confirms a number of things that, that, on a more serious level. But as traders, let's step back a bit. The one decision we have to make, there's lots of decisions we have to make. You have to make a decision whether you're a discretionary trader or a systematic trader. And an, if you use an algo, uh, an EA, or any system that has a very, very prescribed rule set, you are a systematic trader. Now, whether that system is based on, this was actually on, based on news reading, uh, where essentially, they they had programmed in that whenever a certain person in this in this saga said something market would go up when and it was when it was contradicted by someone else the market would go down and the and the the, the trade was a trickle it's it's the model the model uh, uh, that that's how it was uh, that it was it was developed but because the um, Brexit is such a mess um, I think there was and said here it was you know they they were going down to the level that if someone you know had uh, made a thumbs up sign then that was a good sign um, it's it basically all got completely it's gone completely out of hand a hand signals there we are um, that the whole thing that they've had to I think the the, the people who are one of the uh, um, funds that was running it they have uh, they basically had to draw a line underneath it and even so the point of the of the of the, of the article is even the machines have kind of given up with the irrationality and the the, you know, the ridiculous sort of uh, posturing that uh, we've had uh, from both you know in in this Brexit saga but it also as I said it really highlights this uh, this uh, this other fundamental issue as trading whether you're discretionary or whether you are systematic now David and I are discretionary but we have a system in the sense we have a methodology we have volume price analysis but we are the ult we take the ultimate decision whether to enter or not so whether we can you know we may see a perfect setup potential trade setting up and we say we make the decision whether to take that trade or not if you're a systematic trader and you have a very prescribed rule set whatever that rule set is whether it's based on fundamentals a mixture of fundamentals technical it doesn't matter you make the rule set and the the rule set is fulfilled you see something on a chart and something and, and you have to take that trade you do not have the discretion to say no i don't want to take that trade good or bad you have to you have to take it and that is the fundamental difference between the two now the systematic traders they can abrogate that to that responsibility of actually pressing that button to an ea or an algo so if you like you you don't have a choice the, the machine has to uh, the robot has to has to take the decision for you and then you know you 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 look at your uh, at your results and maybe you have to tweak it and what have you but that you cannot withdraw you cannot have that you do not have the decision not to take the trade if the conditions of your system have been met but as a discretionary trader it is down to you you can as i said you can have a system as a discretionary trader ours is in inverted commas we use volume price analysis but the ultimate decision is ours but if you have a system you do not have the discretion to either take or not take the trade and what is also interesting I had a I, I spoke to someone uh, who is involved in machine learning for uh, for this market and he's he used to work in all sorts of different uh, hedge funds and, uh, and hedge fund companies and what have you and the interesting thing he told me that of the traders that he came along the ones who were ultimately successful in the longer term were actually discretionary traders so, but he's involved in machine learning so take that uh, from that what you will. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you. I'll put the link in the thing. 
With regard to fundamental news, I must admit the ECB normally is on a Thursday, so we were all sort of, you know, geared up to uh, ECB. And then I actually took a closer look at the calendar earlier this week and blow me down, it all happened yesterday. So looking at the calendar this morning, as we can see here, there's not an awful, in fact, there's nothing going on until uh, the US session where we have PPI and David and I are back later at quarter to one, aren't we, David? 12.45, where we'll be looking at the US session. So. What does that leave? Well, it's we've got. What's that? I move over to you. Yeah. Yep. I'll move over to you, Dave. Have you been looking at uh, bits and pieces? Yep. So what I said earlier about when we are faced with market conditions that we have at the moment, we look at the CSI. This is where we start, and let me just undock this so we can. Uh, so I can have a look at the. I can change the time frames. There we are. Where's it gone? Let's move that out of the way. Everything is a bit um, is a bit jittery with my charts at the moment. I, uh, although I didn't have the same problems as David, I still seem to have um, issues with uh, some of the indicators. But I think I know it's to do with the Windows update. My machine always goes a bit uh, screwy. Right. How to approach the markets where they are at the moment, particularly if the pair that you normally trade, as I said, things are just so up in the air at the moment and then they're very flat and da da da. da. So, one of the ways you can approach this is through the CSI. You look, you isolate the individual indicator and you look for a trading opportunity. This is the 30 minute chart. Given also market conditions, stick to the faster time frames in terms of both looking for a potential uh, setup and by faster i've got the 30 minute this is i've used the 30 and the hours a kind of benchmark just to show me where the market is you know where the flow of the money is going at the moment we can see here on the 30 we've had uh, uh, we've had uh, some uh, buying of, of the euro it actually sold off after draghi yesterday we've actually got the canadian moving higher down here and we've got the the pound as i said turning over here as well and we've got a bunch of uh, in, uh, lines stuck in the middle some going in the same direction and others with uh, with divergence and as we've explained earlier the csi is not it works on different levels or the first level if you like is what is being sold what is being bought heavily in a particular time frame and it's telling you go and look at that currency not necessarily at a currency pair but at that currency and then we try and match it with where the so we've seen the buying of the euro where is that buying strongest uh, what other currency is it is that against and is it highlighting a potential trade? So that's on the 30 minute. Then we go down to say the say the three minute chart here. What do we see here? Well, we see here that as David was saying, this is the this was the buying in the pound that uh, was uh, had come in. This over oversold. Then we had a little bounce higher. Looks like it's turning over. So if you like, it's it's rejoining the the uh, the move uh, the stronger move that we can see in the slower time frame, the 30 minutes. So if you like, this move higher here, the, against the, the flow of what we see in the 30 minute, could that have provided, let's go down to three minutes, could that have provided from here to here, could that have provided a potential scalp, scalping opportunity and against what? So I've actually got it on the three minute here on uh, the, the pound yen and what that is representing, I just happened to have the pound yen. I, you know, I needed to go and look at the other pairs as well. But it's actually a nice demonstration of it, where we've had the move lower in the pound. We have the volatility. We had the retreat, and we have this counter. We have this sort of secondary trend higher, if you like. Would that have been enough to consider a a, a quick scalp, as it were? And that is a decision only you can take but that is what the indicator is highlighting and now we've had is it coming to the end but we've got a two bar reversal here and we're coming up to london as well and that is if you like the 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 that is the primary move lower this is the second remove the correction if you like uh, the 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 reversal was there a potential trade in there we would have had to look at, uh, at, at at our options, look at the indicators, and now is the is the original trend lower? Is that going to resume? Is there going to be a resumption of that? And then we look at uh, support and uh, resistance levels, and uh, and all the other things that we need to consider when considering a trade. So that's a very very brief outline of 
how we can approach these very tricky markets at the moment. I'm going to pass over to David because you, you've been looking at, you've got London coming up and see what he's been looking at. Just switched over to the Ninja Trader, which should be up on your screens now. And um, Anna's been on Poundy and I've been on Cable. But I just wanted to highlight one or two aspects of it because it ties very neatly into the starting point being the, excuse me, I'm just going to switch off for a moment. I've got a frog in my throat. Uh, it ties in very neatly to the starting point, which is the currency strength indicator. Then you're back to the charts, you're looking at the matrix, you're looking at the array, looking at all aspects and, of course, volume price analysis. And what I wanted to highlight here is just on the two minute, several aspects, but particularly from a VPA perspective. And remember that this is where my cursor is now. That is seven o'clock our time. So that's when Europe's getting underway. The volume over here is uh, relating to Far East and Asia. So in terms of comparing volume, we can look at this uh, chunk of price action through here. This is 8 o'clock coming up in a couple of minutes. This is when London will get up underway and we'll see a surge in volume as always. But what I wanted to highlight was really just how powerful VPA is and how it will underpin and support your analysis from the indicators through the chart. And if you look at the volume spikes, which really stand out, we've got two of them. We've got one here and one here. And whenever you see an anomaly like that, that is clearly telling you that this market is, is not going to go very far because we've got a ton of volume coming in. The price action has come off the highs. It's closed about halfway down the candle, whipped to the top side. You do not expect that market to go very far because you've got a ton of selling in there. The market makers are selling into weakness and the market rolls over. Now, that's, this is on a two-minute time frame. This could be 15-minute, could be anything. It doesn't matter. VPA is universal, applies to all time frames, all markets. The market then tries to rally again, and what happens? We get this little run-up. That was reflected on the CSI. There's all sorts of reasons that uh, we're looking for this not to go very far. We've got tons of volume in here. We're trading within a vo the uh, volatility of this candle. We've got a ton of resistance overhead here at uh, 3098. So if we were trading this uh, to the long side, certainly wouldn't be hanging around in here, and certainly not against the... Uh, slower time frames on the CSI, which are still very bearish towards uh, the British pound, um, certainly against the dollar, which is rising on that time frame. I can't remember. I wasn't looking at the yen at that point. We then get to this second uh, phase of price action here. Once again, we see pretty much a repeat. Ton of volume coming in. Candle rises, tries to, to rally. Market closes halfway down again. It's weakness. And that is really... It really encapsulates volume price analysis, which is read in conjunction with all the indicators. It will give you that advanced information about what is likely to happen next. And if you're in a position, if you're a scalping trader and you've taken that position on as a, as a, a, a rapid fire trade to the long side, as soon as you see that, that is a warning signal that this market is looking fragile. And to be honest, if you're in that situation, You've got a decision to make, and the decision really is just to get out because there's lots of volume going in here. The reason this is more selling than buying is because if this candle was purely buying, then the close of the candle should have been up near the top here of the high of the of the session of the two-minute time frame. It isn't. It's closed back down here. So you can conclude that, that an awful lot of selling is going on in here. The volume is very high, and therefore it's heavy selling, and therefore at the very least you expect this market to roll over. You've also got the volume point of control in here, so you're expecting it to roll somewhere back down here into a congestion phase. Absolute heap of volume goes all the way out over here. Just pull that back a bit. There we go. It goes right the way over here. So there's absolutely masses of volume sitting in around here. We've now got the London, London Open underway. We're going to see more volatility coming in. And literally, as I'm talking, you can see the volatility indicator triggered. That's the power of the indicator. What it does is it doesn't wait till the bar's closed it will automatically trigger and, and warn you that volatility is in the market. The market makers are very active. It triggers with these little triangles, certainly on Ninja Trader, at any rate, on MT4 and MT5 is different. It's uh, triangles on MT4 and dots on MT5. And it's just giving you a, an immediate heads up. We've got another one coming in. No great surprise as the market gets underway. Ton of volume here. 
the volume here is now lower because this is being compressed by this volume here and you can see here the volume is the volatility is triggering all the way up through this uh, region of price action the question you've now got to ask yourself is on this particular candle if the candle closes anywhere off the highs, then are we going to see um, a reversal of congestion into the price spread? The chances are yes, probably. We've also got a heap of uh, price resistance overhead here. All these levels up here are signaling resistance to the price action. That is on one level. That's just on the fast time frame. And I wanted to highlight it because it really is a good example of applying VPA in the markets to help you in your decision making supported by the indicators. What's interesting at the moment, if you look at the trend monitor, it's been transitioning here because we had that minor rally. It's now transitioned back to red again. We've got red on five, we've got red on 10, and we've got red on 30. So the, the current bearish sentiment towards the British pound, certainly as far as cable's concerned, I, I'd need to go and have a look at the dollar to see what the dollar's doing in, in that context. Just head back to, let's go to the uh, dollar indices themselves. This is on five minutes. We've got the yen on the left-hand side. That's been sliding lower without any great momentum so far this morning. This is the dollar. <clears throat> Some volatility in the dollar as well. That's been, uh, it's been a little bit range bounce, a bit of volatility coming as we get underway. And this is the euro on five as well. Again, a lot of volatility, not great uh, direction for the euro either. So everything's pretty range bound, lots of volatility. And it's a question of being patient and just waiting for the trades to develop. Just knock that out of the way. We've now got the volatility candle closed off on two. So at the very least, we're expecting some uh, range bound activity to follow. If we clear that level of price action, that's fine. But what we're expecting now, given we've got the volume point of control down here, lots of uh, resistance overhead. Volatility candle on this, it followed through from this one. Now it's closing down here, so we're going to see some range bound price action uh, develop. Down onto the 30 minute, very volatile, trading in a range, very strong resistance in here. This red dash line, very heavy, very wide. It's telling us there's a ton of price resistance in place there at one spot 31. No great surprise because whenever you get to zeros and 50s, that is where people are going to layer orders into the market. So, you know, this is one of the reasons you've got this very, very strong region of resistance, which is actually acting to, uh, to hold the market down at the moment. Transitioning through to, to red at the moment, you can also see uh, this was the price action on 30 minute compressed, uh, sorry, expanded from, from the faster time frames. This is the volume came in. That was the attempt to rally. Try, market tried to rise, close back near, pretty much near the open. Lots of volume under there, and you can see what happens on this particular candle. So it's no great surprise to see all this going on, given the politics behind uh, the pound. And it's just simply a question of waiting and being patient for a trade to develop to one side or the other. But it's certainly looking pretty bearish at the moment for the British pound. Just see what's going on on the uh, slow time frame. Let's go back to the CSI. A little bit of buying coming in. This is on five minute, as you can see. So um, depending on your, and that's on 15. Bit of buying there as well. The dollar is, is starting to flatten off a bit. <clears throat> Has been rising, seen some buying. And it's really just a question of looking at this and, and just picking out those pairs which may or may not be of interest. Certainly from a, excuse me a moment. Certainly from a reversal perspective, uh, what we'd be looking at uh, to take opportunities from off the reversals from longer term positions, longer term trading opportunities. We've got the euro up here, very overbought. Swiss franc, the green line that is also rising up into overbought. Down at the bottom, we've got the New Zealand yen that's falling, uh, New Zealand dollar rather, beg your pardon. And the Japanese yen, both moving down into oversold. If you go step down to the five minute. There we've got the New Zealand dollar, the grey line, very oversold, moving into that region. The Swiss franc up here, the euro joining it. The yen looks as though it's starting to sell off a little bit more strongly. And maybe that will get down into oversold as well. So from a reversal perspective, what we might be looking at for um, slightly slower time frames, certainly development of something out of maybe the New Zealand 
maybe the Swiss franc up here, possibly the euro in due course, possibly reversal coming off there and possibly reversal off the yen in due course as well. Let's just head over to the matrix. This is on five minute. Let's just isolate out the British pound, see whether see whether there's any universal sentiment across the market. Well, it's a little bit mixed. Um, there's buying. There's uh, pound switch in the mid table here. There is some buying of the pound um, against the euro. You've got pound up here, certainly against New Zealand. The reason it's uh, we've got it pretty strongly against New Zealand dollar is that's pretty much being driven by New Zealand dollar weakness rather than sustained strength in, in the pound. But nevertheless, it's there. It's not particularly strong. And the development of that, we'd move that over to 15 minute, isolate it out, see what's going on, and check out the array as well. Let's just see what's happening in terms of the array. This is on 10 minute, different time frame. Again, there is, uh, we've got selling of the pound against the Swiss franc here. And again, that is largely as a result of being driven through the buying of the Swiss franc and not so much the selling of the British pound right now. So that's the reason that one's there. And of course, up at the other end, we've got uh, buying of the euro, selling the pound here. This is on 10 minute. So it's really just giving you a, a slower term perspective on what is going on in terms of the CSI. Oh, sorry. Just go back to that workspace again. Oh, we're on it. Beg your pardon. There we go. This is the this is the buying we're seeing in the pound right now. Over on to 15. You can see it kicking up here. Let's go back to the chart, see how that's reflected. You can see the dollar is, is just starting to kick over a little bit, maybe. Uh, where are we? There we are. There we go. Back to multiple time frames again. But it's all very, very choppy. And the reason it's choppy is because we're trading in um, the are in and around the volume point of control. We have the volume point of control here on two. We've got it on five. We've got it on 10. It's a way away on 30. It's not on the chart there at the moment. Just refresh that. It's a little bit sluggish this morning. There we go. Here's our volume point of control on 30. So we know for a fact that for a trend to, to develop, we've got to be patient. We've got to wait. And really, it's a question of whether you want to be trading the pound in these choppy market conditions. It's, it's very, very choppy, very volatile. It's no great surprise given the uncertainty that now surrounds this market and the currency in particular. So, you know, the open is, is really no great surprise at all. And it's just, as I say, a question of being patient and waiting. You've got volatility pretty much on every single time frame. And just really to put it into context, this is on the daily chart for a cable. You know, that's where we are right now. Again, we're trading around the volume point of control. Is this going to develop into a trend? It's just choppy moving around. The Let me just move over to the Aussie yen, which is a step away from the pound for, the, for a little bit of uh, relief. Um, the interesting thing with the Aussie yen is really... It's now developing, this is on the daily, but it's also a similar picture on the weekly, where we're now developing this uh, very, very strong channel, which again is building around the volume point of control. Again, this could be a one minute time frame or a one month, makes no difference. What it's telling you loud and clear is that we've, we've got very well defined uh, levels of uh, resistance, ceiling of resistance, platform of support in place, and if this is going to break to the upside, then this is going to have a huge, huge platform in place for development of a trend in the longer term. So it's just one to keep an eye on for the longer term. Certainly one I'm considering uh, looking at myself. It's just a very interesting chart, uh, a little bit tedious to trade on an intraday basis at the moment, the Aussie end, but certainly from a longer term perspective, that looks as though it may be setting up to something quite interesting. I'm going to pass back to Anna at that point.
while David was um, uh, talking through that chart, when we looked at the CSI, let me just bring it up again. Where are we? Um, where's my supervisor? Mm -hmm. Oh, here we are. One of the currencies we were looking at was the, the strong move higher in the uh, in the euro. Let me just go back to the 30 minutes. Sorry, I have to keep docking it and undocking it. Otherwise, I can't change time frames. Yes, and when we were looking at here, we said when we were isolating individual currencies, uh, if we set aside the, the, the British pound, say, well, the one we looked at, I said, well, look, that's been bought very strongly at, in this particular time frame, and it looks like it's going even higher on the 30 minute, which is great because it means that um, there is maybe an opportunity for a, a reversal there. And we were looking at the uh, at, uh, at the Canadian, but also, as Dave was saying, the yen is falling. The yen is falling because I think markets are a little, a little bit more positive uh, this morning. They're not sort of, uh, you know, they're not roaring, but, you know, any, any good news is seized upon as uh, an opportunity to move into riskier assets. And the yen is one of those currencies that that can reflect both risk on and risk off. So therefore, looking at the euro rather than um, sticking with the, you know, looking at the British pound all the time. In fact, the euro yen is, is the one where, and this is the difference that you see when the a currency and a currency pair is not, a, you know, doesn't have this political baggage that it has to cope with, which is why that, as I said, that algo was just having so much, so much, pro so many problems. Look at the smoothness of the price action. And this is the kind of trade that is is out there if you can, uh, you know, if you know what to look for in terms of price action, volume, and also recognize the phase of price action that the pair is in the longer term charts. We'll look at, say, the daily chart of the euro yen. It looks very different to what the pound yen looks uh, looks like, which is why you are likely to get these, as I said, these smoother moves both to the downside. You will obviously always get a, 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 an element of congestion, uh, sideways movement. That's what markets do, and they stay uh, sideways for an awful long time before they get a firm, uh, you know, a, a firm direction comes in. But even in this move, this smooth. Let's look at this. This move lower here is much smoother than this one. So this was a, a, a trend without volatility. We know that because we don't have any pullbacks on it. Then we go into congestion. That looks like a, to me, without even looking at the time chart, given the, uh, the, the fractals and the, and the pivots, there was a degree of volatility in this sideways, sort of a bit of a choppy price action. Then we started to move higher. The trend monitor is, is blue, bright. that's what we want to see. But I, I would suggest, and we'll look at the, the time charts, that this was a trend, but with a trend with a degree of volatility. Look at the number of times that it pulled back here and pulled back here and pulled back here before it carried on higher. And now it's, you know, it looks like it's, it is moving much strongly higher. But we know, given what the CSI is telling us on, on the 30, this particular move may be running, will certainly be going to be running into some significant resistance. And in fact, on the three minute chart, this is what I said about the, the move higher being volatile. We can see this where we have a volatility candle come in, we have a, a, a retreat within the, the spread of this candle. So everything is playing out as we could see both on the Renko and on the CSI. It's all about anticipation, what is likely to be happening next. And this is what the, uh, uh, the, the, the methodology, the system tells you, i.e. VPA, and what uh, um, um, the indicators then support, as it were. And we can see here, this is the this is the move high. This is on the 30. Talking about levels, the level that I would be anticipating that this would be moved to, moving to, would be 125.50. Doesn't look like it's 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 going to get there. Certainly in, uh, at the moment, we have the resistance here at 125.42. This is the resistance that's delivered via the volume point of control. So it's a resistance based on volume, price, and time. And you've got this minor resistance here at 125.41, which is delivered from the support and resistance indicator, which is purely price-based. The Camarilla levels and the support and resistance are price-based. These levels here in colours are related to, I've actually put my volume point of control histogram over to the left-hand side because I've got a lot of lines 
over here. So is this, uh, what are we, hard? we're halfway through this chart. We've got a degree of volume coming in where over, looks like we're trying to get over the, the median line here, but it is struggling. And we know why it is struggling, because on the faster time frame, we've had this trigger of uh, uh, the, the volatility candle. It's gone into the spread of the candle. It has actually tried to break above. So, you know, we just have to wait and see how it plays out. Markets can stay overbought and oversold a lot longer than we think. So let's just go on the uh, on the daily chart. Let me just take the Camarilla off here because then, then we'll just look at raw price. Let's have a look, take that off quickly. There we are. Right, just looking at that. Yesterday we had this. We ended up with this uh, with this Doji candle. Yesterday was uh, uh, was obviously Draghi. You can see that there. That's when you get a candle like this, a candle of indecision. What is also that candle is is on the day there have been some what's called good two way price action. So I think actually during the day, I think the euro was sold off. I think it was bought quite heavily. You'd have to look at, at the chart. So that is that is a very wide ranging candle. And there would have been plenty of opportunities to both sides of the market. This is the candle that we're looking at the moment. Very positive, moving strongly higher. A very different uh, a price action profile to the pound yen, which is essentially stuck in a washing line. And this is what you're going to have to do. But this is what the CSI will highlight for you. It will point you in the right direction, at least say, right, go and have a look at this, go and check it out, check the daily chart, check your benchmark chart. As I said, mine is the 30 and the hourly chart. I'll just move to the hour and make sure that I've got no. Um... And as I said, this was the uh, this is the move. This is where we are at the moment. Uh, the camera the levels on the hourly chart and above are different to the faster charts. These, these levels here will only change at the end, only they refresh once a week. So if we go to the 30, these are the levels that are the intraday levels that we would be working to. So it's a case of, yeah, it's, it's slow down as well, which happens after volatility. You have this momentum, you have this energy coming to the market. Then you have a pause, retreat, perhaps a congestion and it everything just kind of slows down and we then just have to keep an eye on what the volume is you know is is it being is this price going to be supported or not and just very quickly before I pass back to David um, I've mentioned this site before and you may want to um, you know consult it occasionally during the day it gives you it's from my FX book but it gives you um, what the current liquidity is and low liquidity has, well, first of all, low liquidity is telling you there's not a lot of participation, which it has two kind of, it has two, it's a paradoxical effect. One of them is in certain pairs, you get this washing line, you have this congestion, things are just, it's just not, not enough there to move in strongly in one direction or another. But what you also have with low liquidity is, is some you have price spikes simply because there isn't the mass of participation, if you like, to to can you know to to give to deliver a smooth trade in one direction or another. And to give you an idea of um, um, the um, whether it's deep or, or 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 high, you have to look at the the session that we're in at the moment. I mean, London, you would expect far more liquidity than we are seeing at the moment. At the moment, it's only 110% of what is the, is, 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 is the norm, as it were. And you can go back and you can see how low it is. And you would expect it to be low in the um, Asia session. And then you come over here and you look at the time. This is the uh, this is uh, GMT time. You've got 1545. This is just before um, uh, the fix. Actually, this is 340, uh, 1545. Look at it. It's 314 percent, which you would expect. But if you go right over here a couple of days ago, it was nearly 700 percent higher than you would expect. So you know when there is this massive participation, you are going to get more trading opportunities. Low liquidity brings its own problems. And one of those problems is that with the, the, the low level of participation, you are going to get these price spikes. It's just a bit of information to have in background. Just consult it a, 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 
occasionally and think, mm, you know, and, you know, take it from there. But the starting point is always, as I said, what is the market buying? What is the market selling? What is the market sentiment? And, you know, knowing how that interacts with the individual currency and currency pairs via the CSI and sentiment, we go over to investing.com. Where are we here? Well, the, the benchmark at the moment is the S&P 500 futures. The market, for whatever reason, it always has. It's that and the VIX. That is really the bellwether for sentiment. So our futures up, our futures down, particularly S&P 500. And that will give you an insight into market sentiment. And of course, we have the bond spreads as well. If the 10-year uh, the yield is falling, then it's uh, the market is not a happy place. David, is there anything else you want to say? Or is that it? That's fine. Okay, I'll just go back to. Yeah, I'm just uh, as I said, the euro. Look at the euro yen waiting for a. What are we? Oh, this is on the ATR. So each one of those bricks is going through at 2.4, 2.42 pips. Where's my CSI gone? I keep losing it. Ah, here we are. There we are. This is my 30. Still, you know, trying to go higher. The yen, it's, you know, what you want to see, the other thing about these lines is you want to see the steepness of these lines. When they're, um, you'll get a little kink in them, but you want to see the angle. The angle of the line also is a hint that the there is either strong or uh, strong buying or strong selling. Now, what's also interesting, I said earlier, this works on different levels, not just level one is just giving you the heads up of what is likely to, what is being sold and what is being bought. But when these level, when these lines are moving in tandem, uh, in that we see here with the euro and the uh, the dollar, that is also uh, giving us a very clear signal that in this time frame, this pair, the euro dollar, is at the moment moving sideways, which brings its own issues. Yes, darling, you want to say something? Yeah, do you want to move over to you? Mm -hmm. And just to um, highlight that on the MT5 CSI as well, the what you're seeing there in terms of the pound yen, um, the the little inflection point, if you will, on the 30 minute time frame, which is where we are, is really just highlighting the fact that we've had this minor pause point in an otherwise longer term bearish trend. And what it also signals, what you can see there as Anna isolates them out, uh, first of all, the very strong selling in New Zealand dollar, the white line, but looking at the relationship between the pound and the yen, you can see there that they are now really tracking one another. So it just gives you another reason to explain why it is that a particular currency pair is in congestion and it's in congestion because both currencies are moving in the same direction on occasion if there is stronger momentum in one that is sufficient to drive at least a minor trend in the pair but it's always going to be less strong that particular trend it will always be less strong than those where you've got strength in one counterbalanced by weakness in the other those are always the strongest trends and where the two are moving together like they are at the moment there then nothing much is going to develop in terms of the pan certainly in terms of this particular time frame at any rate there may be opportunities of scalping on a one two three five minute whatever but certainly from a longer term perspective that is the reason that particular pair for the time being is in congestion so I just wanted to highlight that. Just want to flip back over onto the Ninja Trader for a moment, just bring you up to date with cable. Now there we go. Okay. Let's go back to where we were on the um well, let's start with the 30 minute really. Just to put it all into context, that was the volatility candle. We had the attempt to rally, which was a ton of volume under here. This vol this candle hasn't closed, but will close in four minutes. That's the top of the wick, which you may not, may not be able to see, but that's the top of the wick there, all the way back down to the volume point of control. The volatility is triggered because we're outside the average true range. And we'll see how the volume shapes up on that particular time frame. And what is going on in terms of this is the fastest. This is where we had the London Open. 
And as always, it's an opportunity for the insiders, the market makers to trap, which they will do repeatedly and regularly and at market session crossovers and all sorts of other points during the day. But this is one of the classic ones. The market moves very rapidly. Traders jump in. They've been waiting for the London Open. Bang. Volatility arrives. We get a reversal inside the spread of the candle and now we're starting to see the reversal and we're seeing that reflected on the trend monitor as well as we move back down to the volume point of control. If we reflect that over on five, there we go. We've got the volatility, this big volatility candle um, and we're now just reversing back inside the spread of that particular candle. And in terms of a trading opportunity, if you're looking to for this trend to develop, then it's a question, as always, of setting levels. And I guess this sets it uh, pretty neatly for you. And where would you be looking for? Well, if you're looking for an upside trade, certainly beyond this level, maybe up uh, to the past the high of this candle at any rate, which also aligns quite neatly with the high of this uh, candle over here, which was um, late in the Far East Asia session. So if you're looking for a level as a potential entry point to the long side, then it would certainly be up at this region here. And to the downside, we've got a pretty similar situation. We've got uh, two tests down here at uh, 3078, currently trading 3085. If we're going to trade to the short side, and you know, there's no reason why not to, but you've got to be patient and wait for those levels to be breached. We've got low volume node down here, so there's pretty light volume in that area, certainly on the five minute at any rate. Let's go up to 10. Similar picture. Very strong resistance here never cleared it we've got the level up here and we've got the level down here we've got some some a, a decent platform of potential support here which has been tested a couple of times already in this session a lighter level down here a low volume node here so if it does move to the downside the trend monitor is bright red we transition through from from blue in this very labored uh, bullish trend higher now we're into bearish uh, territory ton of volume here as we get london underway now we're waiting to see what develops to the downside and really that's it and then it's pulling in going right back to where we started i guess which is with the renko um, using a non-time based chart such as a renko or a tick chart on ninja trader at any rate but um, certainly on mt5 the the, uh, the renko it just smooths out a lot of that price action it takes away the 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 whipsaw nature yes you get the bricks developing and all the indicators working exactly the same way. You've got price support, price resistance, you've got the trend monitor, and you've got the trend dots as well. And it just gives you another mechanism by which to view that price action, stepping away from the from the spikes of volatility and the spikes of uh, the candles themselves. And that's where we're on the daily. So really not to just reload the, uh, reload the VPOC again. Uh, it's just very much sideways price action. Volume point of control is sat here. Ton of volume around this region. And exactly the same principles as before in terms of looking for opportunities. If you're looking for a break away from this region in terms of a longer term development of trend, then you've got to look at levels. You're looking at the floor down here somewhere. You've got a pretty strong ceiling in up here. This is probably a pretty wide range now. This is over, what, two, 300 pips now. Um, but from a longer term perspective, you know, that's not a problem because you'll be looking to take that out in the market anyway. So it's a question of just being patient on the slower time frames. Ton of volume underneath. It's really when, only when we get back down to these levels, which probably won't uh, be seen anytime soon, uh, where we have very light volume. But the trend monitor is just consistently um, confirming the bearish nature of the market right now. But we are trading around the volume point of control itself. So it's no surprise to see endless congestion going on for the time being certainly in terms of cable i'm going to pass back to anna really really interesting on the 30 minute of the euro yen what's also interesting is i'd like to point so uh, i'd just like to highlight for you is this is this is the um uh, this is yesterday, obviously from um, from from Draghi, and we saw we saw here this very very sharp sell off in the euro. Basically, basically saying it was very very uber dovish. They're talking about more negative interest rates at different levels within the banking system. You can catch up with uh, 
uh, his his comments and the analysis of his comments uh, on somewhere like Forex Live and you know your your general news feeds. But from a price action perspective, what's interesting as well is these are the two big uh, volatility candles uh, marking the the move lower we saw here the first one and then the second one and then we've had this retreat retreat into the spread of this second one and in fact what we're trading now this bit of price action we've got here now is in fact within the 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 range of that volatility the high of this volatility candle is as i said here it actually coincides with the level uh, on the the vpoc at one what did i say 125.43 we have a minor level here um so the, the volatility candles also act as within their as kind of range as it were and when you have this very very wide range on 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 this 30 minute chart this is a perfectly uh, feasible, uh, acceptable um, uh, trade, as it were, trading uh, opportunity. But you have to be aware of the highs and lows of the volatility candles. They themse in themselves also um, give you yet another support and resistance level this time based on the volatility so and we can see here it just we have this this confluence if if you like this is acting as a, as a as as resistance we've got this price this is a very minor price resistance because it's a hatched line and in terms of a potential target this is the potential target one 125 49 25 50 because it also coincides with the the r uh, the r4 in terms of uh, in, in in terms of uh, price objective but at the moment it is being contained as i said as a result of uh, reaching this uh, volatility now is it actually going to in going to go through there um, we would have to go down to the faster time frames and here we have here we've got uh, it did actually get through this candle here uh, this is the, uh, the this is the pullback and this is the attempt to rise we've got 140 125 43 again coinciding with the uh, levels that we have on uh, the, uh, the the slower time frames and we just have to keep going back to uh, non-time based chart it hasn't you know it's still trying to move higher the, this is one of the beauties of the Renko is that it helps to keep you in it smooths out these these uh, as I said these uh, these pullbacks even this pullback here we had here we had just we went into the gray dot not the red it never went into red this is uh, telling congestion pullback correction the pivot came in as support but this has stayed relentlessly blue and in terms of using it when we are going to get a a potential reversal really have to see some first of all we see some red dots they're the ones that are fired first and then we have to see what happens with the trend monitor as well but as a as an example of say moving away from the pound yen which is really choppy really tricky at the moment there are trades but you've got to go and scope them out using the uh, the CSI as your starting point let me just see where my CSI is I've disappeared yet again oh here we are this is my three minute one as we can see here and this I this is what is driving this pair at the moment and as David said sometimes you get this asymmetric force uh, from one pair that's is much stronger it looks like it's possibly the yen which is helping to you know uh, move the pair higher rather than uh, a, an overwhelming uh, desire from the market to continue buying the euro but this is the 15 minute we can see this overextension the yen isn't quite at its overextended down here then of course we've got oh and the as david said perhaps you know the aussie yen may be a better one to look at because on the 30 minute we've got the yen falling down here but look at where the aussie is in terms of its travel into overbought it's a it's it's a it's at a fair distance away from where the euro is so possibly you know the sentiment uh, as expressed by the market via the yen um it, now that that is going to be expressed more strongly in another pair we've had some nice buying in the euro yen but maybe on a sentiment uh, basis the market is saying okay uh, selling yen i'm fed up with selling it against the euro or it's come to a point where as i said it's come to these resistance levels on the, the euro yen pair but it, the market still wants to sell yen well where has it gone to well there's the swiss yen and we've got the uh, the aussie yen here and why and look at the position 
of those lines of the other currencies in relation to the yen. Right, that's all I've got to say. David, you've got to say any questions? No, we've done all the questions. Just very, very quickly, as I said, we've gone, we haven't really gone over time, we've just sort of wanted to catch up uh, from the slight delay from this morning. Very, very quickly, as I said, the investing.com is where you can go and catch up on what sentiment is. Just use the S&P 500s for global market sentiment and also what the VIX is telling us as well. You've got the bond yields there. Keep an eye on the liquidity. What is it? Is well, we seem to be creeping higher, which is uh, uh, no, it's not. Where are we? We've actually gone down slightly. One one uh, hundred and fourteen percent. But you know, we'll keep an eye on it. Certainly for uh, the U, the New York session later on. If it's um, your first time with us, the indicators that we've been referring to, they're our own, the ones we've developed, uh, David and I, for our own trading, and available from Quantum Trading. We've been looking at the MetaTrader 5 and the Ninja Trader, but as you can see, they're also available for TradingView. Not the full set on TradingView, but the CSI is available on TradingView, which is, as a trader, that is the one I always suggest for its traders. Everyone should have all the details are on the indicators are there. You can buy one, you can buy a bundle, or you can buy the full package. The advantage of the full package is that whenever we develop a new indicator, it will be automatically added to your package. You don't have to pay us any more money. If you click on the individual indicators, it will take you to the page where all the uh, videos are and the support pages really explaining why we developed it, how you can use it in different trading scenarios. And the education, the Forex education uh, program that we, David and I have put together is here at Quantum Trading Education. These are the modules, but the, uh, the, the program includes the full package. So you can either opt for the Ninja Trader package, the, uh, the MT Meta Quotes, or the trading view. The trading view package is a little a bit less because you don't have so many indicators. All right, and everything is covered by our seven day money back guarantee and supported by our fantastic customer service. I have to say that because they're a fantastic bunch of guys and uh, it's 24 seven. I think we've even done customer support on high days and holidays, Christmas Day, but there we are. All our customers come from all over the world. Thank you so much for joining us. David, is there anything else you want to say, Tommy? No, that's it. Uh, we are back at 12.45. We'll be looking at the New York uh, session, see what's how things are, have played out. If you want any more information on anything we've said, you can email me, Anna at AnnaCooling.com or David at quantumtrading.com. So enjoy the rest of this morning's session. Let's see uh, what happens. Let's catch up later on if you're going to be joining us. If not, we will catch you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.